All right, so here are two more tricky examples with mins and maxes. Uh, and then in the next video, we'll finally start talking about critical points. Um, but for now, so example five, uh, we have this function here, which I guess we'll just call uh, y equals f of x. All right, so first of all, we see uh, there is a, let's zoom in just a bit. There is a local max right here, okay? It's not labeled because it's not important for what we're going to talk about. Uh, local min right here, same thing, not labeled. Local max and a local min, uh, again, not labeled. All right, so, you know, this, 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 this is pretty straightforward, right? So what about this point 7, 2? Um, you know, there's, it's labeled, but there's nothing special about it, right? There's nothing special about that. That's not a local min. It's not a local max. Uh, it's not a global min or max, right? Uh, and actually, this function has no global extrema because uh, here, the, the function keeps decreasing off this way. So there's no minimum, there's no absolute minimum, and the function keeps increasing over this way, so there's no absolute max. All right, but what's, what about this point 7, 2? Well, as it is, nothing special about it, but what if we remove that, all right? So we'll put an open circle here, all right? And let's put uh, the new point at 7, 4 up here, so that's why we have 4 labeled. So we'll put the new point up at 7, 4, all right? So now, uh, what happened? Well, we just made the function discontinuous, so there's a discontinuity. It's a removable discontinuity. Remember that from uh, a bunch of videos ago. Um, when x equals 7, we have a removable discontinuity here. So, um, well, what is this? Is this a local max now? So it, it's kind of weird, but yeah, it actually is a local max. Um, it does satisfy the definition, right? So let's put a little tiny open interval i. Okay, so here's our open interval i uh, around x equals 7. And we'll bring this guy up here and up here, right? And we do see, in fact, that uh, f of 7 really is greater than or equal to f of x uh, for all x in this interval i. Okay, so any value, let's zoom in just a bit here. So any value of x that we pick in this interval, uh, it's going to correspond to something, you know, on this piece here and here. Uh, but these are all, you know, pretty far down, or not, I guess not too far, but they're down below 7, 4. So f of 7, which is 4, really is greater than or equal to uh, f of x for all these x values in here. So this uh, does satisfy the definition for a local max. Now, um, I, I can't really think of any examples where something like this would happen in, like, a practical application, uh, but it is just kind of a goofy little, you know, thing that could happen, so it's worth mentioning. Um, so this really is a local max. Uh, but again, because it, it's also a discontinuity, so it's not really a point of interest in a physical application um, that I can think of anyway. That doesn't really mean anything, I guess, but um, I can't think of any example where something like this would happen uh, where you'd have to be concerned about that. But it is a possibility, so it is worth seeing, and it's fairly interesting, I guess. You know, you might not expect it to be a local max, but it really does satisfy the definition. So um, I guess the point here is that the definition for local max and local min uh, they don't really require continuity. Some people might require it or they might prefer it. Um, I guess we all probably prefer it, but uh, you don't really have to have that. Um, but anyway, that's example five. So uh, kind of tricky, not really too bad. So let's look at example six here. So with example six, we'll zoom back out just a bit. So with example six, uh, here we have this function. Let's just call it y equals g of x. Um, Notice it's a piecewise function, right? So we have this piece and this piece over here. So here's 2 comma 3, here's 2 comma negative 1. Um, so we have a jump discontinuity here. So uh, this point 2 comma 3, uh, is that a local max? Uh, and yeah, it really is. Okay, so let's put a tiny open interval i around x equals 2. Okay, so here's our interval i. Um, i. So we can bring it up to the function here and then down here. So any uh, x in this interval i is going to correspond to a piece uh, of the function over here or over here. Uh, and we do see that f of 2, which is 3, okay, f of 2 is 3, or sorry, g of 2, this function is g, uh, g of 2 really is greater than or equal to um, g of x for all x in this interval i. Okay, so any x that we pick in this interval i is going to give us a y value um, that's going to be less than or equal to uh, g of 2. Okay, so g of 2 really is greater than or equal to g of x for any x that we pick in this interval. So for all x in i. Okay. 
So that satisfies the definition of a local max. So kind of strange, right? But um, you know, it, it, it could happen. So again, just like with example five, uh, I can't really think of any practical applications where uh, you would be, where something like this would happen and you'd be concerned about it. Um, but again, that doesn't really mean anything. Um, there might be some out there, but anyway, um, for most of the practical applications, you might have, uh, you probably won't have discontinuities to worry about. Um, for most of the ones I can think of anyway, for pretty much all the ones I can think of. Um, but anyway, they might come up, you know, it is a possibility, so it's worth seeing, uh, just like example five. So let's play around with this a little bit. What if we change this? So let's get rid of this here. Um, so we'll put an open circle over here, and then we'll close this one here. All right, so what do we change? Well, now we just change this. Uh, G of two is now negative one, right? And uh, this two comma three, this is no longer on the graph, okay? This is just an open hole here, open circle. So um, now what happens? Well, now G of two is actually less than or equal to G of X. So we're gonna change this to uh, less than or equal to G of X for all X in this interval I. So now actually, uh, if this piece is, or if this circle's filled in and this circle is not, then uh, what we actually have is uh, a local min here, okay? This satisfies the definition for local min, right? So again, it's kind of weird because we have a discontinuity, a jump discontinuity here, but this really does satisfy the definition for a local min. So any x that we pick in this interval i, uh, what's going to happen is that g of 2, which is negative 1, is less than or equal to g of x for any other x that we pick. Because okay, any x that we pick is going to put us up here or down here, but uh, any x is going to give us a g of x, which is greater than or equal to g of 2. All right? So that's what's happening there. Um, so that's uh, two more tricky examples there. I guess real quick, what happens if we remove this uh, and we make both of these open circles? Well, then what happens is uh, 2 is actually no longer in the domain of G, because when X is 2, uh, the function is not defined at all. So you can't have a local max or a local min at a value of X that's not even in the domain. Okay, so um, this is no longer true. Right, so 2 is not in the domain, so we can't have a max or a min there. So uh, just real quick mentioning that. And um, that's pretty much it. So in the next video, we'll start talking about critical points and how they relate to all this min-max stuff.